Today we'll continue with our series. We've been talking about um, being transformed. Uh, God called us to experience a transformation. And He accepts us and welcomes all of us the way we are. But once we come to Him, listen, He wants that we experience a transformation. As a symbolical and the times when God delivered His people, the Israelites from Egypt, and took them through the desert to the promised land. The idea was to cross the desert in 17 days. But it took them 40 years. How much? 40 years. Because they could never let go Egypt. They let go Egypt physically, but mentally they could never let go. What symbolized today that we all will used to live in the world mentality. But once we come to Christ, it says that we must let go the ways from the past. We cannot continue with that mentality. We must allow God to transform us so we can possess every blessing that he has. We've been talking about being transformed in our spiritual life and becoming healthier, in our emotional, in our mental, in our relational. And today, we're going to talk about being transformed in our financial and that's why I heard about a young man that was having some money problems and needed $200. How much? To get his car fixed to make it to the college. All right, so he tried to borrow from the people, but nobody gave him. So he called his parents via the operator and reverses the charge and says to his dad, Dad, I need to borrow $200. At the other end, his father says, Sorry, I can't hear you well, son. I think there may be a bad line. The boy shouts, Dad, $200, that's what I need to fix my heart. Sorry, honey, I, sorry, my son, I still can't hear you clearly, says his father. The operator cuts in, sorry to butt in, but I can hear him perfectly. The father says, oh, good. You send him then the money. <laughs> he was not listening purpose, okay? Purposely. Have you ever had somebody that is talking to you in the phone, and then you start to talk about something serious, and they go, uh, hello, hello, I cannot hear you. And you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hello, hello. Have you, ever, have you ever had somebody? Man, don't do that to me, okay? I get so aggravated then. Hello, hello, hello. And then they hang out the phone. I'm like, Argh. this young man that was trying to borrow the money, borrow the money, because for whatever reason had no money, it represents to many of us. It represents to many of the Christians today that don't that they don't know how to use money. Today we're gonna hear something that literally has the power to help you to break through from poverty and to start to enjoy the riches that God has for all of us. I don't take too much time in our services to talk about this because the moment you talk in church nowadays about money, people, they go like, what I call the mentality because money and the topic about money in church it has been abused so much in the last days people has taken advantage of good Christians and that's why I personally didn't want to hear nothing about this but if I want to help you if we're going to get one day healthier in our Christian walk and get every blessing that God has for us. I don't know about you, but how many of you guys want everything that God has for you? You said, you mean many people don't say, should I raise my hand? Should I? You see, God has many blessings for you. The whole Bible talks about, listen, blessings and promises that God has for you. You see, the problem is that many of the promises, they have a, what we call a, a premise. What it is this. Is it has a condition. God is saying, if you do this, 
I will do this, this, and this, and that in your life. We think that it's just going to come from the heavens, just like that. But no, there is a promise. And today, I want to help you to get healthier. Listen, the people in this city doesn't know. What am I saying? The Christians around the world don't know how to use this principle. They say they do, but they don't. I want to help you today. Did you know, here's a couple of facts. Did you know that Jesus spoke more about money when he was on earth than heaven and hell? How many believe that Jesus took the time to talk more in his ministry about money? We should talk once in a while about money. Yes or no? Okay. I'm already losing you right now. I can tell right now. And the reason is because this is the most new service. Now pay attention. Here are some facts. Just to show you how important it is to talk about money. In fact, did you know that all his parables are very important in the Bible? And half of them, say with me, half of them? Half of the parables mention money and how to use money in the Bible. Imagine Jesus used parables to teach. Half of them, they have to do about money and one third of these parables that he was teaching or that he was teaching about it was about made wise decisions in our investments wise decision and how we invest our monies very very important now today I want to talk to you about seven principles how many talk to you about seven principles or if you allow me to say seven habits that you must develop but I want to start by reading this because everything in close in this portion of the Bible Proverbs 3 9 and 10 you ready oh you're not ready man are you ready okay honor the Lord with your wealth with the first fruits of all your crops then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your bats will brim over with new wine wow from there we're going to start saying about this number one here is one of the seven habits for financial health are you ready here we go i must trust god as my source and supplier if you want god to bring order in your life in your financial life you must Learn to trust God that He is your supplier. See, your source of income is not your job. Here's what I want to start helping you. Look at me. Your source of income is not your job. It's God. Many people think that your source is your job, but you're wrong. Really, that job is only the channel are you hearing me? The channel or the tool that God is using to provide to your needs. Your ultimate source comes from God. Let me give you an example. How many of you have faucets in your home? So you can open it, right? You want water. You go over there. You have to intentionally open the thing. And then water comes out of there. For whatever reason, the, let's say that the, 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 the faucet everything can get clogged. Or water is not flowing no more. Now you cannot say my source of water is messed up, and now I can have water. Let me ask you a question: Is your source the faucet? Yes or no? Is your source source for water your faucet? No. It's only the two. It's only the channel. Your source is the rain and the snow that God provides from the heavens. And then we can, as humans, learn and collect the water and learn to use it. But your source is ultimately who? God. Many of you don't understand that your source and your finances is God. He is your source. You may say, well, I work very hard. Look at what it, uh, look at what it says over here because I'm going to help you. Romans 11, 36. Everything comes from God and exists by His power 
and is intended for his glory. You need to know this. Your source is God. He's the one that provides to you the strength to what? To get the job. You say, but I work very hard. Okay, but I, I, I went to school so many years. and I, Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Who gives you the strength to go to work? Who gives you the strength to get the job? Who gives you the wisdom and the favor to graduate from school? It was God himself. So you cannot even take vanity and say, I work very hard. I deserve that money. Because the bottom line, you are healthier to get to your job because of the grace of God. So we need to understand that your source for your finances is God. That's the first thing that you need to understand. I'm saying I must trust God as my source and supplier. Some of you have not faith that God can supply to your needs. God is the one that supplies everything. I'm going to be honest with you. For many years, I worked hard. I received my pay. But my pay was not enough to live my life. I don't know how God, how many of you find yourselves like me? That I don't know how, but the money that I need that I cannot get in my own is keeping coming. And I'm keep living by the grace of God in many areas that I cannot do it by myself. You want to give a hand clap to God? Go ahead. See, that's why. We need to understand that everything comes from God and everything is for His glory. God owns everything. And you need to get that in your mind right now. Who owns everything? God. Then why if I pray God doesn't give me His money? Because you're not doing your part. See, you think that just by praying, no. God says that you got to do certain things. Number one, you must apply faith, number one, let's say. You must have dependency in God. You must understand that the money that God entrusts us is not for us. And just so we can feel good with that. And so we can give glory to God through even the income that we have. Different way to think. Different way to think. Look at what it says in Deuteronomy 8, 18. Remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Find these two words interesting. God give us the ability. Who give us the ability? If God doesn't, how many know there is a lot of people that as much as they can, they will never have the ability to work the kind of job that you do. They say, what are you talking about? Well, very simple. Your job, you have to move from one place to another. And those, well, well, yeah. But what about people that cannot walk? Can they have your job? No. If they don't walk, what do you mean by saying, yeah, yeah. See, God is giving you the ability to have that. But it says that God gives us the ability, and it says to produce. You see, God entrusts us everything with a purpose. What? To produce. To what? To produce. Young people, there's a lot of young people here that says, I'm lost. You better learn this. Because you say, I don't even have a job. But you receive money. And I'm about to teach you that you are involved even in this teaching. And wiser would it be for you to learn this now so when the time comes, you don't have to go through the mess that your family has to go because they don't have discipline. Learn tremendous principles that can help you to break through. Produce. It says produce. God believes that you and me, we have the ability to produce. He entrusts us not only to enjoy, yes, to enjoy, but to what? To produce. To what? To produce. Number two, I must keep good records. Should I continue? What this has to do with receiving blessings from God? If you want His blessings, you need to keep good records. How many of you want to have a con constantly stay, uh, let me put it these words, is the best way. Stay away from worries how many want to be with peace in your life and how to say that worry free that's the best way to say it how many want to be worry free my friends yes it's very simple what do you mean very simple keep good records of your finances we are so indisciplined and we don't keep sometimes good records for many years I didn't keep, I didn't keep good records. 
with time, I have to learn. I don't know if it went this through your mind once, but I remember having all this money and then suddenly think, where the money went? Where all my money went now? And then I start to get worried and thinking, where all my money is going? Have you ever feel like that? Where, 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 where is, I'm, come on, yes or no? I'm trying to get you laughing now because now I'm touching the nerve. And it's good. That's what I'm here to try to help you. Like, where did my money come? If you keep records, you will find out, ah, it's because I was eating in this place that I shouldn't. Oh, I was also using the money right here. I was also, are you with me? And I remember we were just uh, baby Christians. And I remember coming to Gladys and say, but where is all the money that I give you? And she said, we spend it. But where? And she used to say, we spend it. And I want to pull out the money out of her. But I used to be fancy to come and say, give me money. Hey, give me money. Go and get this. Go and get that. So what she was doing? She was obeying. She was doing this. She was obeying. She was doing that. Then I come and say, hey, where's the money that I give you? It's gone. And then I say, what do you mean it's gone? And I say, it's gone. And then I say, show me. Show me the money. And she said, it's gone. And then she said to herself, I'm not going to have this discussion never again. And she worked in a bank. And she said, from now on, I'm going to keep records. So next time Pastor Tony comes and says, give me money. How much you need? 20. Okay. <laughs> Buy this. It's going to cost a... Buy it. Okay. So... Here is me coming next time. Where's all the money? Twenty dollars went in this, fifty dollars this, hundred and fifty dollars, three hundred dollars went in this and this. And I listen, 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 listen. That is small discipline taught me and taught her how to use money next time. That's what the Bible is teaching to us because God wants that we learn how to use our money. Look at what it says, Proverbs 27, 23. Riches can disappear fast. <laughs> how many of you know what I'm talking about? Riches can disappear fast. So what, what, what your business? I'm sorry. So watch your business. Somebody write this wrong. So watch your business. Interest closely. Know the state of your flocks and your herds very interesting it says watch the business interest closely know the states of your flocks and your herds you see in those days remember the riches it was it was calculated very different or it was reflected very different than today today you have money you take it to the bank and you keep your money over there in the bank investments or whatever in those days it was by keeping animals are you with me? The people, the more rich, where they have more cows or they have more bulls. You know what I'm talking about? So they could not say, okay, I got 10 cows that I'm going to give it in this bank. Keep it to yourself, right? I got another 20 cows. You cannot do that, are you? So there were, there were no banks. But this is what I'm trying to say. God is even saying, keep watch closely of what I have and trust you. Keep it close to you. Why? Because riches disappears so fast. Have you ever found in yourself, here's another thing, that you have this money and then I say it, that it disappeared, but you really don't know where it went. That's an alarm for you. You're not keeping good records. You need to keep records what's going on with your family and with your money. Number three, should I continue? I must give the first 10% back to God. We talk about this already in becoming healthier spiritually, but I'm going to touch a little, a little bit about it for those that you don't know. We talk about this, but pay attention. If you want His blessing, look at, the Bible is very clear. If you want my blessing in whatever area, you should put me first. That's what God says. How many want God to be or oh, 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 oh. How many of you guys want God to bless your family? You gotta, what was the teaching in the Bible? Put God first. How many of you guys want God to bless you in your job? What's the teaching? Put God first. How many of you guys want to have God blessing your finances? 
the put God first. Very simple. Very simple. Look at what it says over here in Deuteronomy, right in the beginning. God giving the law, right in the beginning. Deuteronomy 14 23. The purpose of tithing, tithing, is to teach you always to put God first in your lives. Since the beginning, Moses was given the teaching God through Moses, you're going to give the 10% of everything. 10% of everything, of everything that you receive. Why? Why? Why since the beginning? Because God was trying to teach his people to put him what? First. To use a practical step. God was not saying, go work and give me everything. Do you know that slaves work like that? Look at me. God was not trying to make us a slave of him. A slave people, they go and work with everything they got. If not, they will kill them or arrest them. But they will have not access to the benefits of their work. God said, I give you 90%. You just entrust me 10%. And even with a promise, 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 promise says, I will multiply even that for you. So God was trying to help us. The purpose of giving to God is to put him first. Look at what it says in Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Honor the Lord by giving him the first part of all your income. And he will fill your barns to overflowing. To overflowing. How many want to have your barns to overflowing, my friends? Okay. Did you understand what is that? You already maybe have your, your barns overflowing and you are not even living a grateful life. You don't even know. God is blessing you. And if you don't, God wants to have your barns flowing with blessing after blessing. Now, it doesn't say honor the Lord by giving him the first part of all your income. It doesn't say give me the leftovers. It says give me the leftovers. You and me, we come from a culture that they taught us when we went to church. Get the coins out and give a little bit of the coins. How many know you were taught like that? I, were, I was taught like that. Are you with me? When they used to pass a little thing. Uh, and I remember even my mom, you know, pulling out all the money. You know, pulling out all the money and say, okay, not this. Where are the coins? Where are the coins? And then she would pull out the coins. I was a little kid. She didn't know nothing. She didn't know better. And she said, here, honey, give a couple of coins. And I thought I was doing right. No. God says... Give the 10%. And now I'm about to become closer to your heart. God says 10% not only from what you receive working. It says everything. What that means? That means that if you receive extra money in a gift, that 10%, some people, what they say? It doesn't belong to God. See, that's not part of my job. Everything that you receive you must give the 10% to God. Everything. I know you can say, well, I disagree with that. Well, I can come and sit down with you separately. You want to talk about this. But the Bible is very clear that everything, even if you receive settlements, my friends. I will talk about this in the, about this in the first service. Some people, um, they get some money out of, out of court, out of the, you know, a sula, whatever you say. You say like that? A lawsuit. And, and, um, and as they get the money, they, it's amazing. They get all this money, and they say, praise the Lord. They even come for me, I mean, to me and say, Pastor Tony, can you please pray for me? Because I got this going on in court. Now they receive the money, and instead of what are they supposed to do right away? They what it belongs to God and give it to God. But because it's a big chunk of money, it's easy to give the, are you with me? And they don't give it to God. It's a shame. I even, listen, sometimes see people receiving huge amounts of money and not being able to give to God what it belongs to God. You need to give to God everything that belongs to God. And your finances are going to get well. You say, well, I don't, I don't work. I receive money from the government. Give 10% of that. And I'm here to say something. Many of you, are like my friend. He used to work with me. 
And he was learning to give to God. He was not too smart. We had no kids in that time, Gladys and I. So when it was time to pay taxes, we have to pay taxes. And I know for some of you, like, what? Because I know when it's taxes time for most of the people, it's like to get money. But since we didn't have kids, we needed to pay taxes. And instead, this guy, when it was taxes time, he was like so excited. I was not because I needed to pay taxes. But he, the guy said, oh, man, taxes are coming. I say, are you crazy? I'm going to have to pay money. He said, no, me. He got like 20 kids, right? He was like 20 kids. And, 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 I, and I said, what do you mean you're not? He said, you crazy? I, I'm blessed during taxes time. I said, why? I get all this chunk of money they giving me back. And I put this and this and even my dog and my family. And I, anyways, and I, you know, and then I say, how much money they give you? Close to $10,000 every year. And I'm like, wow. They literally giving my money to you, man. The way I pay, they giving it to you. And I got mad. And then I said, how much they give you? 10000 Man, that's amazing. And I say, you better give the 10% to God of that. And he says, well, I can. I already own everything. We're going to talk more about this. I, he already owed everything. The $10,000. He was already what? Waiting for them in order to what? To pay his debts. And I said, well, praise the Lord that he's paying his debts. But what a wrong way to live life. What am I saying? You should not live. And I'm getting closer now. You're not supposed to live. Listen, owing all the time. I know that we live in a mentality but it's not according to the word of God. God said that you shouldn't owe to nobody. And by the way, you owe something, pay. That's when I lend money. I give it the money just thinking if they give it back, praise the Lord. If they don't, whatever. I sometimes insist in the beginning just because I want to produce character in the people. Hey, you need to pay this back. But if they say no more, I, I stop doing it. That's, I don't even want to lend people money today. You know why? Because... They don't want to, they cannot pay or they don't want to pay it back. And they end up leaving church. How many know what I'm talking about? So it's like, I don't even know if I need to give money. They come and ask for money. I say, Gladys, I don't know. I don't know. I love to give and help people. But when they cannot pay back, they, whatever they feel. Now, you need to understand one thing. This country says, if you don't owe money, and then you're not going to build some credit. And if you don't build credit, well, you're not going to be able to buy something bigger and own it in the future. But as the whole mentality is, you constantly what? Buying something that you don't have. Are you getting what I'm saying? And then what, what the Bible talks about this? Number four, I must save and invest for the future. I don't have it, I don't spend it. If I don't have it, I don't spend it. Now, I used to own money. In the beginning, and what I did, I pay everything. I pay. I did the whole process, card in the credit card, whatever you want to do, and, and I did it. But I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I was a baby Christian in those days. And you know why I start to owe some money? I started to owe them money because she was, you know, she grew up in more than me in this culture. And she says, hey, we need to build a huge credit. So we got to do this. We got to do that. Because in our future, in our future, this, in the future, that. And I say, I'm not going to keep. And I, we start to owe money. And you know what? I learned like old school. They taught me you work hard. You separate the money that belongs to God. And whatever you got, you save, you invest, and you keep it. And you spend what you have. So, you know what? I was always like that. But and then we start to like, you know, doing this here, doing that. Suddenly, we start to own money. Thank God. We pay it. But I said to God, sorry, forget about the dumb credit. I don't need the credit. I got the owner of all the credit. And if I need the money, he's going to give me whatever money I need. But what if we need hundreds of thousands? I say, believe with me. And together, and what happened? 
We need hundreds of thousands sometimes. And guess what? The big chief says, you don't need the credit of this world. I credit you. I'm the, your God. I'm your living God. I'm the owner of all. Now, you better give a hand clap to God. And literally by hundreds of thousands when it was necessary. I was honoring God. I was with the humility saying, God, I'm not going to get what I don't have. And you need to learn and live in this way. You know why? Because that is going to make you free worry. Worry free. I've been talking too much in Spanish. Lately. I'm translating everything in my mind. Worry free. When I go to sleep, and some of you guys are saying, what is that? <laughs> you don't sleep. But when I go to sleep, the sound of peace becomes a reality in my home. I sleep. And you say, you sleep like you're not going to wake up tomorrow. That's it. I give it all today. I live my faithful life. If I wake up, praise the Lord. But if I don't, I'm going to see the great king. And I'm going to be okay. Now, I'm going to sleep right now. You know why? Because I got the peace of God. You heard just what I said. I have the peace of God. Why? Because they're not going to come and knock my house and say, you own, baby. You own this. You own that. I'm going to tell them, you know what? Not in this house. Keep on knocking the next house because in this house we are there free. We only purchase what we have. We, uh, you better give a hand clap to God. That's what you have to learn. It's a difficult, this service. It's crazy how this service is not plugging in the teaching. And you know why? Because I can tell that 74% of you or more are broke, owing money, and you don't know how to get out of there. And the only thing you're thinking right now is I should go bankruptcy. You don't have to. You have a great God. Start with baby steps. He can help you. He can help you. Are you with me? We all can come out of that. But you have to honor him. You have to what? But if it doesn't even make it with what I have, how in the world I'm going to save? I didn't say you have to save much. Save little. Look at what the Bible says about us saving, my friends. This is so interesting. The more I found, the more I get. Proverbs 21, 20. The wise man saves for the future. But the foolish man spends whatever he gets. He gets the money. It's changing time. No. Save the money. Save the money. I'm not even going to say you are a fool or not. I'm about to give you a statistic that is going to blow your mind. Are you ready? You're not ready. I'm not going to give it to you. Are you ready? Yeah. Look at what it says. The average of Asian people, average of Asian people, save 20%. If there is an Asian here, they will say yes. In the first service, there were a couple of Asian people. No, you're not Asian. You just look Asian. You have Puerto Rican. Look at what it says, the statistics. The people from Europe, they save 18% most of them. People from Europe, yes or no? 18%. People from Europe, 18%, yes or no? It's part of the living culture. Now you want to hear something that blow my mind? Well, you're not ready. Are you ready? When the Americans spend 1% more than what they have. That's what it does this show. We spend more. We spend in what? More. That's what the United States. Have you noticed how much money we owe as a nation? Yes or no? And now the Asians. No, I, got, I say, keep asking me. We need to save. We need to save. Look at what it says here. Money that comes easily disappears. I'm sorry. Money that comes easily disappears quickly. But money that is gathered little by little grow. You need to what? Grow. Your money, saving how much? Little by little. If it's five dollars, if it's a dollar, it's not necessary what you say. It's the ability. Listen, listen, listen. Have you ever tried to spend something that you have saved with so much sacrifice? What am I saying? 
instead of buying hamburger no I'm going to save that five dollars and then you save it for one year and then when it's time to spend it you want to spend it in something foolish and you guys what do you, what, what do you, what do you say I remember when it happened my first time I saved and I was ready to spend it it cost me so much that I say it cost me so much I'm not going to waste it in damn damn TV so and then you become what smarter not only about saving it's about understanding the use of money this nation these people and these neighborhoods don't know how to use money and it gets me mad don't even have food in their refrigerators oh but their kids are walking with fancy shoes because it's the beginning of the year oh my kid would not go with the shoes from last year oh no 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 my kids need to go with the fancy shoes yes or no Somebody needs to tell you in your face to face and say that you're wrong and you got to break out of that mentality. That's not from God. Well, everybody, you need to put your priorities in order. We found people that have literally no food in their refrigerator, but their kids are going with the fancy shoes, $200, $250. That's everybody does it. So we got to do it. No. No, 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 no. And you say, no, no, no. Look at me. I was addicted when I was young and without Christ to get my fancy shoes. My shoes cost over $250. Whatever money I get in my job, whatever money I get, guess the first thing I do the next one day? Spend it in shoes. And you say, oh, no, pastor. Uh-huh, ladies. Your shoe addiction. Uh-huh, now. Can I talk to the ladies in the house? Uh-huh. But I need it. It's because it doesn't match. You don't need it. And then all these shoes you never use. But I need new pairs of shoes. You already look beautiful what you got. But I need another ones. They're the same color. No, these are black. And these are black, black, black. Come on. They're the same color. They're black shoes and black. No, these are black and these are black, black, black shoes. Listen. Some of the kids today demand, I want fancy shoes. It's, it's hilarious. Uh, the, the, Simon and Liz, they got a little girl, three-year-old. And they get a present for one of those fancy shoes. You know, uh, I'm not even going to call the, the name. But my daughter, she's six years old. And... Um, we were in camp, and you know, the, the daughter of Simon cannot even walk with the big shoes. She was walking like this. And, and then uh, my daughter saw that, six years old, and said, Daddy, have you seen her? Um, Hannah, she got fancy shoes. I want one. I want, I want some of those. I don't have them. And I look at her and say, And you're not going to have them any day soon, honey. She went like, when I say, you want some of those shoes, honey? Yes? Yeah. Yes, daddy. Say, you're going to have to work before I buy you some of that. And you say, oh, but I see your son wearing some of those shoes. Yes? Ask him if I bought them from him. He worked for those shoes himself. It was a gift. Today, if they cost more than $50 for me, they are already pricey. I mean, I'm just old school and becoming cheap. Call it whatever you want. I don't care. I spent thousands and thousands of dollars. Are you with me? You say, basically because my kids, they look cute. Have you ever seen this? I'm going to say it. These Jordans that are the baby cannot even walk, but they got them with Jordans. Yes or no? This is crazy. And you say, it's because my teenager looks so good and play basketball. Look, your teenager looks so good and he can jump as much as he wants, but he never going to be Jordan. Okay? I don't care how many Jordans you have. It doesn't matter. He, he goes like, eh. He never going to get that. Okay? So stop investing money in what is foolish. It's like today, people, I'm depressed. I'm going to buy something. They don't have it, but they want to do it. Shh. Proverbs 24, 27. I'm not going to finish. Develop your business first before building your house. Sometimes I go to see some house of my friends. 
And then I go to the back jar, and the back jar is not finished. And they say, well, it's so, it's so ugly and everything. And I say, what happened to this part of the house? Oh, we didn't have enough money. It's like building your house with not contemplating. Number five, I must set up a repayment plan to get myself out of debt. Proverbs 3.27, don't withhold repayment of your debts. I'm not going to spend too much time here. Number six, I must budget my spending. Proverbs 21.5, plan carefully and you will have plenty. If you act too quickly, you will never have enough. I used to love this, my wife. She used to say, she used to come with a bag, two bags. And I say, and that? I'm saving you money, honey. <laughs> and I say, how come you're saving me money with that? Everything was in sale. <laughs> but we don't need it. I say, we will. I say, you're crazy. But it was insane. How can I let go? This thing is about $200. And it was only $25. Can you understand? And I say, do we need it? Not now. But we got to prepare for the future. And I say, leave the future in God's hand. Okay? Let's better keep the money instead of keeping the things in the house. Guess what? We become obese. And the thing didn't fit me. She was saving me money. Not really. It ended up being the bed of Pancho, my dog. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. That happened years and years ago. But the, it is true. But now we learn as a couple, listen, that we, not because it says, save. It's so funny. Now we, listen, we are so dumb as a nation. The day, I'm sorry, but it's hilarious. They even create days that they say, come and buy. Because it's Black Friday. Am I right? Come. Everything is cheap. Now, I used to have businesses, and you too. They're not losing money. They're just remarking the thing to make you think it's cheap. And they only sell 10 like that. And as you go over there and you don't make one of those, as you come and out, you're depressed, you even buy, well, whatever, I'm going to buy the one that costs a lot of money. Because... But everybody does. Yeah, keep making circles in the desert. 40 years, they used to have this mentality. No, <laughs> they do. Remember the manna? Was given to receive it every day. But these people say, I'm going to gather more for me. What if God doesn't send them blessing tomorrow? Say they didn't want to put God first. They thought, we're smarter than God. Maybe he overslept tomorrow and there is no manna to feed us. Let me say some. What happened to that manna? Worms appear because the provision of God is daily. As much as we don't want to understand it, he will provide to us daily. Amen? And last, I must enjoy what I have. You must enjoy what you have. Stop comparing yourself with those around you. Amen? We are so blessed. How many of you can say that we are so blessed? You would not understand how much you are blessed. Okay, you're not paying attention. You would not understand how blessed you are until you have to go to the hospital once a week. Some of you should be dead. How many can raise your hand and say, I should be dead? And you're not. You are overwhelming. You are overwhelmed by the blessings of God. Be content. You don't have to have an upgrade because others do. Well, my TV is not 3D and it doesn't curve like the new one now. People go to my house and say, you still have those TVs that have the big box in the back of the thing? And it's funny because I'm, they give me something for free. And it's hilarious. I go to my staff and I told them, do you want my big TV? And they look at me like, it's hilarious. I say, but it's brand new. And they go like, I even brought it to the church, the Spanish church. And I said, I got this big brand new TV with a big back. 
It was big and beautiful. And you know what happened? I said, at the end, at the end, if you want to take it, I'm thinking they're going to die for the TV. At the end of the service, the person that cleans, hey, pastor, they left the two TVs down. What do we do with them? <laughs> everything that I have, everything that he entrusts me, it's not for me. That's so I can give glory to his name. If in the process I got a little blessed of that, praise the Lord. Amen? But I'm not comparing. Be content. Amen? Be content with what you have. Give to God what it belongs to God. And the blessing will flow in your life.